we can probably just get started. So let me do my official welcoming um, pitch, everyone. So yeah, thank you again for attending the webinar, Unlocking Continuous Connectivity with Particles M series products. So in this session, we're going to, as Colleen mentioned, uh, look into the M series and its uh, applications. If some of you don't know me, I'm Jess, I'm the content director at Wavolva. Um, obviously, if you're not familiar with Wavolva and you came here via um, Particle, please go and check us out on socials. I think Stavros, maybe you can drop um, our Instagram or something into the chat so you can go and follow there. Uh, and it's my pleasure to introduce Colleen, who's the de developer success lead at Particle. Um, and I've got a great bio here. Colleen identifies as a total hardware geek and first encountered Particle in 2016 when she taught a photon class at Computer Camp and has been a big fan ever since. She's been with Particle since 2021. And uh, pr prior to that, she was working in consulting for impressive clients, including NASA. Um, and in this webinar, Colleen's gonna dive into how to get started with the M series. Um, and yeah, as she mentioned, a little bit about Particle in general. The webinar in total is probably gonna run for about 45 minutes, but um, there's plenty of time within that for questions. So please use the Q and A box and we'll try and get to those questions. If we don't, we're going to create a wrap article of the, of the webinar. So we'll have the video there and then any questions that we don't get answered on this call, um, Colleen and I'll work to, together and get them answered and have them in that article. And we'll send that out to everyone that's registered for the webinar. So um, don't stress, we'll get, we'll get to you. Uh, with all of that, thanks again for attending and uh, Colleen, I'll hand it over to you. All right, thank you so much, Jess, for the kind introduction. Hello, everybody. I am so excited to talk to you all about multi-radio today. We'll also be going over a little bit about particle in general, because I know some of you are IoT experts, but a little new to particle. So I want to show you around the system uh, and get you to see what we can do here. All right. So first of all, I'm Colleen. I do DevRel at Particle. I'm very happy to be here today. Uh, today, we're going to go over uh, the challenges of IoT, why multi-radio is a thing that should exist and why it does, what the M series is. Then we'll talk a little bit about the muon, uh, the MSOM, and the particle ecosystem in general. We'll also go into scaling best practices a little bit and then talk about, or then go over any questions you may have. Who's ready? I'm ready. All right. So it is a truth universally acknowledged that IoT is hard and annoying a lot of the time. It's very, very cool. However, all of us who have developed with IoT in general have had to deal with frustrations. I like to say that when you're building with IoT, you either feel like the stupidest person to ever exist with a brain made of forage or a complete and total genius. And there is rarely an in-between. And most IoT projects fail and they fail for quite a few, dif for quite a few different reasons. Uh, there are business factors, internal factors, security factors, and scaling factors. So it's hard to justify a lot of the business cases. It, uh, it's very difficult to deploy or to find people with the skills to deploy. Uh, security, we have all heard the security horror stories about some IoT products. Uh, my favorite or least favorite really are to hear about the easily hacked baby monitors so where people were just saying very creepy things into a baby monitor, um, which some people really need to find other hobbies. Have they tried crossword puzzles? Because I think they would enjoy crossword puzzles. It's a much better way to spend time. Uh, scaling is also an issue with high cost and lack of resources. It also often takes a long time to scale and to go from the prototype to scaling is often very difficult and overly complex. And that's where Particle comes in. Uh, so traditional IoT development looks like this. Uh, they're essentially a collection of microservices and assembling the solution is very costly and slow 
And the journey has many, many, many points across it. You go from building to designing to writing the firmware to certifying to integrating with the cloud to managing cellular car carriers, which, by the way, can take forever and should be like 20 bullet points in one just with the time it requires and then testing and then fleet management and then somewhere along there is losing your mind but i didn't put that on the pretty little graph or pretty little chart so this is where particle comes in particle's whole game is simplifying the development and scaling of a product typical iot speed or typical iot build uh, takes 18 to 24 months to complete, requires 23 plus vendors, and costs four times as much uh, to build from scratch. There's a, a saying in the maker or builder community, uh, why buy something off the shelf when I can spend four times as much and lose my mind across the way uh, and spend much more time? And while I do in my day-to-day -day life when building a bookshelf for instance find it worth worth the while to spend more money lose my mind and end up with a worse product when actually building a business that doesn't hold a bunch of water so for particle it takes six to nine months to bring an iot product to market you have one vendor in an e integrated platform and the cost of ownership a quarter of the other cost because Particle has a full scale platform. We take care of the cloud platform. We take care of the connectivity. The device OS for Particle, which I'll go into in a little bit, is unparalleled. It takes all the very, very, very annoying parts of building something and makes it so we handle the annoying parts so the actual users don't have to. Instead of spending weeks and weeks building a subscription system to push updates, you get that right as you log in. Uh, and Particle also has a suite of developer tools. Right here, this is just my re the regional compatibility tool, which tells you what device works where, uh, because there are so many different carriers that we work with across the world. Anyway, uh, and because connection is very difficult. Uh, and that's what we're going to talk about today. IoT connectivity is the trickiest and most annoying part of IoT development. That is because everybody wants a device that works everywhere. And connectivity in some ways can be very, very simple, but that depends on what you're actually doing with it. If I am building, for example, a smart garage door opener and I want it to be connected pretty much all the time, that I can just do that fairly easily with a Wi-Fi device. However, a garage door opener isn't super, super important uh, for just my personal thing. If my garage door doesn't open, then okay, that kind of sucks. I have to do the manual, do it the manual way um, to park in my car. I back up my alley. People in my street get a little annoyed with me, but it's not the end of the world. However, let's say it's a medical device. If we have a medical device in a hospital that goes down, the consequences are much graver. Uh, if we have a remote device that is tracking data in like, let's say it's less urgent, but still highly important. Uh, for instance, I know quite a few agriculture uh, users of Particle, including some really cool work out of the University of Minnesota, um, which I just wanna highlight because they are awesome, but that keeps track of irrigation needs and makes it much easier for to optimize growth of plants and watering. If that goes down, it's not urgent that day, how or it doesn't seem urgent that day, 
However, a loss of connectivity can greatly impact the overall success of the project. And this is difficult because connectivity is actually really complex. There's not a single wireless technology that works everywhere. At home connectivity or single place Wi-Fi connectivity is the easiest. However, as soon as you add any level of mobility into that, it, it becomes a little bit more complex. Sure, you can use uh, the hospital example I said and just say, oh, well, if they want 100% connectivity, you should make sure that they have cellular connection. However, I don't know if you've been to a lot of hospitals lately or academic buildings, but there is always at least one corner of the hospital or the building where cell phones go to die. You can, it feels like you're transported back 50 years to a time free cellular device. I remember when I was in university, I worked in the school IT department and one of the most important things we did was resetting up uh, all the new landlines for the hospital because service was abysmal and they had to make sure every couple of years that they had new working phones everywhere. Wonderful, wonderful, very high tech stuff. But I digress. There is no single technology that works everywhere. There's Wi-Fi, there's cell phone, there's LTE, which does reach 85% of locations, but 85 is not 100%. And even if you have a technology that could work most places, there are different versions for different environments. If we go back a few slides, this map, these are different devices needed for different cellular networks because there's not one cellular network that works everywhere. And I want to repeat this one more time. There is no singular technology that works everywhere. It does not exist. It is so complicated. Why is it so complicated? Because the, every technology has limitations. There are Wi-Fi limitations. Uh, there are cellular limitations. There are satellite challenges. And, there, and then there's uh, LoRaWAN issues as well, because no matter what you have, the perfect technology does not exist at least not in one place. If we wanted to build a device, a cellular device that works the vast majority of places, oh wait, we did build that. And it does work for a lot of use cases, but there are gaps. And so the solution seems obvious. Use multiple connections. That is where we come in with multi-radio networking. Multi-radio networking is the integration of multiple radios in one device. The key advantages to this are network diversity, uh, the redundancy and failover protection, and our solution is scaling up to multiple, scaling multiple network pipes. We have Wi-Fi, cellular, LTE, BLE, GNSS, satellite, LoRaWAN, I accidentally went back a slide. Uh, but this is the pretty, pretty graphic here. And our solution for this is the Particle M series of devices, M for multi-radio, uh, in case you didn't get that. What are the M series devices? We've got the Muon, uh, which is our developer board. And then we have the MSOM, which is our SOM. So pretty. Muon is for prototyping. Uh, oh, wait, that's the wrong Muon. Sorry, I had to put that in there for my fellow complete and total nerds, in which I imagine is the vast majority of this audience. At least I hope so. All right, here's the actual muon that we're talking about today. Uh, not the actual part, not the particle. The muon has, me, ugh, words are hard. The muon is the first all-in-one multi-radio development board. It has 
cellular Wi-Fi, BLE, GNSS, satellite. That depends on uh, the ver the Amazon variant that you have. LoRaWAN and Ethernet pre-certified uh, to make sure regulatory and industry stuff's not an issue for you. It's got Raspberry Pi form factor, so it works with a lot of different accessories. Uh, connectivity, it has the best connectivity of any device around, and it's also incredibly easy to scale because the, the Muon and the MSOM are powered with the Particle IoT platform as a service with simplifies development, deployment, and management of products. We'll go into that in a little bit. Uh, this is my pretty little graph, which you can find on the Muon data sheet. Ah, not old tab. I was so, so arrogant for a second, like the Muon data sheet, and then went back accidentally. But I just want to really call out right now our the particle documentation and our data sheets in particular, because I'm giving a cursory explanation right now of the Muon and the MSOM. And but we go into fantastic detail right here at docs.particle.io. Please, please, please check it out uh, if you have questions, because I assure you. All of your questions regarding uh, Muon configuration are answered here. Unless they're not, in which case they will be answered at community.particle.io if you just ask them. Anyway, there are multiple elements needed for a successful prototype, uh, flexibility, affordability, compatibility, and ease of use. Muon is perfect for all of this. Uh, it's a rather cheap device. It works with so many different uh, firmware libraries. Do I have my library search over here? Look at all these libraries. Article ecosystem, amazing. I actually believe a couple people in this webinar audience right now may have even created some of the libraries. We're among celebrities. Amazing. Anyway, uh, ease of use, already there. Uh, to get the Muon up and started, you can get it takes uh, roughly five minutes. To push your first program after that, it takes about 30 seconds, depending on what program you're doing, to do a simple uh, Hello world or, okay, the hello world of the hardware world, which is blink a light. You can do that right away, 30 seconds, amazing. The particle sandbox, I know a lot of you are wondering like how much does this cost? Uh, aside from the device cost, the particle free sandbox plan is completely free for up to 100, 100,000 data ops a month and a, up to 100 devices. So you're able to build a little fleet. You're able to get a lot going. Uh, be mindful of your data op limits. Like make sure you're not using all of those data calls all at once. I saw some people uh, accidentally making like 40 calls a second. Um, try not to do that. You will run out pretty quickly. But other than that, we want to make it so uh, we want to make the sandbox plan so you see how easy it is to build. And you can even start to scale before you grow. I want to make it so you get a full actual community. One sec. Sorry. I thought I had a tab with the community in there and I was going to do that, but looks like I don't have a tab right now. Anyway, after you use the Muon, you're like, hey, what do I do next? I'm ready, I'm ready to scale up my business. I'm ready to start my empire. That's where uh, this little bit comes in. The MSOM, it's at the heart of the Muon. And it is built for scaling. 
Uh, there are multiple varieties of the MSOM. What you use depends on where you're going to use it. So again, shout out to that regional compatibility tool. Use it, please use it. Uh, make sure you're getting the right device for your location. What is the MSOM? Oh, the MSOM is a thing of beauty. Uh, I'm realizing I have the, the MSOM is a thing of beauty, I say, realizing I had the wrong picture on the other slide. MSOM has an M2 connector. Uh, the MSOM has cellular, it has Wi-Fi, it has BLE, and it makes it very easy to build and scale. Uh, when you're scaling on the MSOM, the M2 connector makes it very easy to uh, build at scale in a production environment. Uh, and since you're using the same ecosystem as with the Muon, you don't really have to change a lot. The code already works. The product environment that you have already works. You can, in the, pro er, in the particle console, create a product and send mass updates. Everything is already there. And this, uh, this is the uh, graph for the MSOM. So the MSOM does ensure future proofing uh, with the hardware abstraction layer. Uh, you reduce and control your development and prototype costs, uh, which is something that a lot of enterprises fail to anticipate uh, when thinking about what goes into a successful IoT product. Uh, they think about the original cost of hardware and time to market, but we make it so the actual code migration isn't actually a, an event or an issue to think about because uh, you can use the same cloud infrastructure and development tools as you scale. Something that you write and build on your Muon at home and the MSOM in the field works exactly the same way. You'll never need to tweak or modify what you've written to make it actually work. So you can go from one to 100,000 plus devices uh, without really changing a thing. We've got fleet management so software, uh, so you can do over the air updates for small, smallest or the largest fleets very quickly. Uh, we have a robust messaging system that is uh, completely secure. You can set it up in about an hour and have billions of events per month. Uh, we also have fully documented cloud APIs. And I really wanna stress the fully documented part because I do truly believe that Particle has the best documentation in the entire IoT world. Uh, seriously, the docs are beautiful, beautiful uh, pieces of <laughs> technical writing. Uh, we also have an, integrate, an integration platform that allows one-click integration with most third-party uh, cloud platforms and applications. So I'm going to say it again, one platform for prototyping and mass production. We've got the ease of use. You can work it right, right out of the box. Uh, we have a an expansive suite of developer tools and the best in class resources around. Uh, our hardware abstraction layer is very robust. Um, it's scalable and secure. Uh, and there's one management interface so you don't have to go to a million different places uh, trying to get the same thing done. Uh, for enterprise grade customers, we do have uh, priority procurement and a top notch success team and support. Now I've talked a lot about the particle ecosystem where I've at least alluded to what it is. Uh, let's dig into this because I do know a lot of people watching have never used particle before. The particle ecosystem makes it very easy to develop firmware, compile in the cloud, and flash devices. Uh, <laughs> we have the particle workbench IDE, which is our VS code extension, the particle CLI, uh, which is a very fun little CLI, very capable too. Uh, 
You can also use the CLI in Workbench, which is how I always use it. Uh, the particle console, which we'll dig into in a minute, um, and it's very easy for configuration, customization of de device behavior, uh, data reporting, and third-party sensing without writing code. Um, we minimize the amount of code you actually need to write to get this up and working. Uh, we also have over-the-air uh, deployment. You can do it without being connected, and very quickly, too. Setting up a particle device is incredibly easy and incredibly fast. Uh, you just go to setup.particle.io and get it done in a flash. Uh, the particle IDE, there are two IDEs. Uh, for quick little demos or education purposes, you use the web IDE for anything of substance. Please use Particle Workbench. Uh, Particles VS Code extension is called Particle Workbench. It is the best tool for building anything with complexity. So Web IDE for really, really small demos or like quick in-class projects. Particle Workbench or anything else. Look at my face. I am very serious right now. Leave, use Workbench. It's amazing. All right. Now, Particle Console. Oh, I love the Particle Console. Particle Console is at console.particle.io. You can see in the console, uh, we've got the device section. Look at this. Uh, it shows you the status of your device, the type of device, uh, when it was last heard, and it gives you everything you need to check out, out the events. Um, here, this is uh, so you can see what's been happening, the vitals you have. Uh, I clicked a device that is not actually connected right now in my demo, <laughs> my demo account. But uh, you can see what the signal quality is, signal strength. Those are different things. Uh, and the round trip time, memory usage, battery charge. Battery charge, by the way, is one of the things that I think people don't pay enough attention to because often it is the source of a lot of your problems. Make sure your your power is in check. Now, you can also see the products you're part of. So you can have multiple devices in a fleet uh, and it'll show you your general Fleet health, event traffic, integration, cloud function calls, uh, variable requests, all of that. Um, we'll go over your customers. My business here is doing very poor. There are zero customers for it. I'm failing. Uh, it'll go over the events. Uh, you can check out your firmware and you can, oh, this is my favorite uh, feature, by the way. This is fairly new. You can get started with a with setting up an integration. Like if I wanted to set up Zapier, uh, which by the way, I was mispronouncing for years as Zapier. It's Zapier, apparently. Met someone who works there. I boy was my face red. Um makes sense because they're called Zaps, but I just thought it was a little quirk. Anyway, you can set this up very quickly. Um just a couple minutes. You can also uh, manage the team, invite team man members, give them different roles, uh, support, view only, developer, admin. And you can also set up uh, authentication for additional security purposes. I'm not going to dig into the settings feature. Um, I don't think we really need to go into that right now. That is the particle console. I love the particle console. Um, okay. I went to the wrong thing. There we are.
Aside from the particle console, uh, here's a couple other cool things. Uh, we've got some cloud functions that make your device way easier. Uh, we have pu particle publish and particle subscribe. Particle publish um, allows the device to generate an event based on a condition. So let's say uh, the if my sensor detects, uh, let's say I'm building an irrigation system and I've got a sensor, a soil uh, moisture sensor that when checking out the moisture says that the soil is very, very dry. Uh, and I want to trigger that. Uh, so I would say uh, if the so if the sensor is this, particle dot publish an event, uh, and then you can subscribe to the event um, and immediately have a subscription system in, in place. Uh, and we'll go into subscribe in a second. So each publish uses one data op. Uh, remember, you have 100K per month for free. So be mindful of that, but you're probably going to be pretty OK. And a device can publish at a rate of one event per second. Uh, with bursts of up to four in one second. Back-to-back -back bursts of four messages will take like four seconds to recover. So again, be mindful there. Now, particle subscribe, uh, that subscribes to a published event. It allows devices to easily communicate with each other, um, makes it very easy to talk to, to talk to other devices. For example, if one device published uh, something with a motion sensor, and another device subscribed to that, uh, it could respond by sounding an alarm or something like that. All right, webhooks. Let's talk about webhooks a little bit. Webhooks are tightly integrated with Particles event system. Devices have the devices, of course, as we've mentioned, have the ability to publish and subscribe from the cloud. A webhook listens for a specific event that's published by a device. When the event is published, the webhook triggers a web request to a URL on the web. This request sent by a webhook can include info about the event, like the name, any data, when, and like when the event was published. Uh, you can configure a webhook to make different types of web requests. Uh, most common one, of course, is post, which is a method of sending data to another web server. In the case of particle webhooks, this would mean sending data from your devices to a third-party web service. Oh, sorry about that. Other type of web requests like get and put, also really possible with webhooks. You can do that. Um, people don't do it as much, but you can. You can. I believe in you. Oftentimes, a web server uh, that you hit with a webhook will return data to you as a result of the request made. When this happens, your device can subscribe to a specific event name to receive the response from the web server and use it in your firmware logic. The combination of webhooks with the Particle Cloud's hub sub event system makes a very efficient way for you to leverage online tools and services and integrate them in your connected products. Uh, webhooks is just one piece of the larger puzzle of particle integrations that we looked at before. We want to make it incredibly easy to send data from your devices to wherever you need it. And that is just an example of a webhook trigger. All right. Particle logic. Particle logic is a very new feature that is one of my favorite things that we've built. Uh, logic functions are bits of JavaScript code that gets called in response to a logic trigger, uh, such as a parallel event, a scheduled time event, or a webhook response. Running in the cloud, these functions perform short calculations, like generating new events, or even storing data in the ledger database, they consist solely of calculations and conditional logic without direct interaction with external APIs uh, or maintaining state across runs. Um, logic functions are available at both the developer sandbox and org le level with a limit of 20 functions per sandbox or organization, five triggers per function, and a maximum execution time of 30 seconds. Additionally, ledger feature allows for uh, cloud data to storage and future synchronization. Uh, though currently 
only cloud in beta. Um, events to and from devices are limited to uh, 1,024 bytes. Uh, lose, using logic, though, you can transform abbreviated or compressed data, expand it, pass it to a webhook without the size limit, which is kind of awesome. Uh, while a webhook response can't trigger another webhook, it can trigger a logic bot block, which allows for more complex data processing than possible uh, with must have variables. Use case for this include cloud protocol translation, moving business logic to cloud, and alerting on abnormal conditions. Logic events do not count as addi additional data ops, though triggering events from a device or webhook response still do. And Ledger, oh, Ledger, Ledger, Ledger. Ledger allows data to be stored in the cloud per device, product, or owner account uh, with three different types. There's cloud ledger, device to cloud ledger, and cloud to device ledger. Each, le each ledger can hold up to uh, 16 kilobytes of JSON data without a predefined schema, uh, which supports simple values and nested structures. These ledgers are accessible in developer sandbox and org level, make sure you have device OS 6.1.0 or later. Uh, you have to use device uh, Gen 3 device or later. Um, so anything F boron and above. They can be managed through Particle Console. Uh, Logic and Cloud API make it very ideal for tasks like configuration, data ag, uh, and device lifestyle management. Uh, all right, next up, let's talk about ACID OTA. Oh, ACID OTA makes it really easy to include bundled assets. Um, it's available in device OS 5.5.0 and later, uh, and it makes it so you can include bundled assets such as graphics, fonts, and sound samples for delivery to system components like coprocessors and external displays. You can easily add assets by specifying a directory in your project properties and using Particle Workbench, CLI, or Fleetwide OTA for building and flashing. Bundled assets can be up to one, like 1 1.5 MBs after compression, uh, which is really similar to GZIP. Please note that the web IDE does not support this. So again, since this is something with like any level of complexity, please use Workbench. Don't come to me saying that you tried it on the web ID and it didn't work because I'm telling you right now, you can't do this on the web ID. You've got to use Workbench. Workbench is awesome anyway, so use it. Uh, anyway, you can register callbacks using system dot on asset OTAs, which makes it really easy to process the received assets. Particle products. See, I told you we'd talk a little bit more about particle products. Particle products group devices with similar firmware and usage. They enable team collaboration, automatic fleet-wide firmware updates, device grouping, team access controls, and fleet health monitoring. Uh, device cloud charges are managed by your account, and you can handle customer building, billing, not building, or incorporate uh, costs into your overall product. Devices are controlled by unique device IDs, and we prevent unauthorized usage. You can add devices in bulk with billing starting only when your device goes online for the first time. Now we've talked about particle in general. I wanna just touch really quickly on scaling, how to scale with particle and the best practices for that. And then we're going to go into Q&A, amazing. All right, scaling best practices, first up. Uh, bulk SIM activation. If you're going from uh, prototype to scale, one of the things that I see people have the toughest time with is if they don't come up with a good way to bulk activate the SIMs. Best way to do it, use a data matrix scanner, scan the particle serial number on the particle device, um, and perform this eight the activation asynchronously to simplify manufacturing. Uh, use the bulk. We have a bulk import function that you should use for this. Uh, if you pre-activate, then you're going to avoid delays because activation can take up to an hour. Just 
do it in advance so you don't have to wait up to an hour. We've all had our attention spans just smashed into smithereens. No one wants to wait an hour. Assembly and test. Uh, assign QR barcode or barcodes to each. Link them to the particle device serial number in an internal database. Scan each part serial number in a script that interfaces with your cloud. Assemble this, connect it to the test rig. Make sure you have a test rig. For programming, this is best on using JTAG when possible. I, I really recommend this. Uh, make sure you prepare your test application and pro production application images. Um, we have a hex generator tool that I suggest you use to easily assemble images for uh, targeting device and OS versions. Um, for Gen 3 devices running device OS 3.x and earlier, which I don't recommend anyone doing that when starting out. We have some people on legacy doing that. But for that, uh, you'll just need to set up a flag for setup done as you're uh, bypassing the original setup for it. Provisioning. All right. Provision devices async with manufacturing. Automate this with a script to handle multiple devices efficiently. Make sure you keep an eye on uh, API rate limits. All right. So we have covered a lot today. Oh, we have covered a lot today. And I'm sure there's a lot more we can go into. So does anyone have any questions? Colleen, that was amazing. Thank you so much. There is definitely two questions in the Q&A. Um, can you see them? If you open that box, or I can read them to you. OK, I see two questions, both from Stuart. Yes, perfect. Uh, all right. Will OTA uh, be available on M635? Yes, OTA is available on all of our products. So. That it. Uh, what will NTN data cost? That's a great question, Stuart. Uh, that that question is variable, and I highly recommend for that question uh, talking to someone on the particle sales team, who I would be happy to connect you with, because um, it really depends on how much data uh, are you using it. Reddit, like in sandbox level or are you using it in mass um, and where the data is located. So that is a question that I unfortunately will have to say, we've got to have someone on sales talk to you about. So if you reach out to me, um, my email is colleen.lavin er, at particle.io. If you send me an email, I will connect you with the person who you should talk to about that, who has the right answer for you. Great. Uh, so are there more questions from the audience? Um, we'd love to have them now, but perhaps there's also a lot of information that we just got. So people might need some time to marinate, which is also okay. And uh, yeah, there's lots of ways that we can stay connected. As I said, we're going to do a wrap article where you'll better see the video of the webinar um, and uh, so yeah, we can we can connect through that later if there's something that comes up. And as Colleen said, reach out to her directly and the particle team um, also have a really great engineer support. Uh, yes. Yeah, I would aspect. highly recommend checking out community.particle.io, which is the particle forums and my personal favorite particle resource, yeah. uh, though I am incredibly biased, but the forums are awesome. Yes, <laughs> but I agree. Oh, one more question. Um, good one from Javier. Ooh, hi, Colleen. I am not experienced with Laura. How can I know if my zone is under covered for the muon? Uh, so for that, you can go to the device regional compatibility tool, uh, which is located in the particle docs. And there we have a full coverage map and that'll tell you if you are covered. 
Nice. Nice. Okay. Any last questions, guys? Um, and if not, then I would extend a huge thanks, Colleen. That was super informative. Oh, wait, we're getting more questions. Great. Thanks. Ooh. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, super informative. I really learned a lot. Um, and yeah, appreciate your time and appreciate everyone for coming. As I said, stay in touch uh, with both Particle and, and us. Uh, we'll email you the um, the wrap article and the full video once it comes out. And um, yeah, have a great evening, everyone. And Colleen, we'll speak soon. Awesome. Thanks so much, everyone. Great talking Thanks, to you all. Thanks. Bye. Bye.